Hello, welcome to Oxford Heirlooms. Today, we're gonna to be pleating our fabric. Now, I have my pleating machine loaded with four pieces of hand quilting thread in the four needles to the far left of the machine because this particular pattern calls for four pleating threads. Now, before I can actually run it through the machine, we have some marks up along the top shoulder seam on both the front and the back. And um, at the top of the back neck piece, where eventually I'm going to have to gather the fabric because we won't be smocking it up there. Okay, so this is gonna take me a minute to sew my basting threads in. I'll sew the first one one eighth of an inch from the edge, and I'll sew the second one one quarter of an inch away from that. But that'll take me a minute to get to my machine and sew the basting threads in. Okay, so I have been to the sewing machine and I sewed my basting threads along the top back neckline in between the marks on the two shoulder seams. Okay, what I've also done preliminarily, since I have to have mirror image front pieces for this garment, I've written the word left, L-E-F-T, on one and right, R-I-G-H-T, on the other. The other thing that I did was um, in the center of the back, um, I drew a line with my fabric marking pen from the bottom smocking row to the top center, and then I ironed that fold away from the back of the garment. Okay, so now it's time to pleat. I'm gonna put my back piece aside for just a minute, and I'm going to work with the right piece first, okay? Now I have a 5 8 inch wooden dowel that I'm going to put perpendicular to my last smocking row, and then I'm gonna bring my fabric over because it's, you know, you have to kind of practice learning how to get this fabric running in where um, it rolls up nicely. And then I'm gonna roll my fabric and I can see my blue line. Let me make sure I keep my pleating threads out of the way. I don't want them to get in with the smocking. Okay, so my bottom blue line is matching up with one another. And then I have the straight line, which is the front facing of the garment. For me, I would prefer to put a straight edge um, into my smocking machine as opposed to a, a, an angled lid. So I'm going to put my dowel inside my pleating machine. I'm going to line up that blue line with the pleating needle. Let me move my dowel a little bit farther which is the, the, the far left pleating needle. I'm gonna follow that blue line as I draw up the pleats with the smocking machine. Just go slow. I think I've mentioned before in another project, these needles um, are becoming more and more expensive every day. So you don't wanna be breaking them. But fortunately, Swiss Batiste is such a thin fabric, um, it pleats up like you're putting a knife through soft butter. I don't like to pleat quilting cotton, but some people do uh, smock with quilting cottons, but I avoid that if I can help it. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off of the needles. I gotta pull my gathering threads through here and then very carefully, without pulling the pleating threads out of the fabric, I had pleated my first piece of fabric. Now this is the right side, so I'm gonna turn it over. And I'm gonna set that aside, and I'm gonna repeat this process for the left side of the front and the back, but that will take me a minute. Okay, so I have smocked my left side, my right side, and my back piece. So I'm going to set my pleater aside along with my wooden dowel. I'm gonna keep my embroidery scissors. I'm gonna keep my seam ripper out. Okay, now unfortunately, this pattern did not come with a blocking guide. Okay, now when we made the um, Wendy Schoen pattern baby, we had a blocking guide. Okay, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the back piece. Okay, now at the back, I'm going to kind of stretch my pleats out on the left-hand side of the back until I see my blue line. 
and then using my seam ripper on the dull side so I don't accidentally cut my pleating thread. At the pleat next to the blue line, I'm gonna pull my pleating thread out. Okay, and then just using a simple knot, tie two threads together. And then tie the other two threads together. Okay, since I don't have a blocking guide, uh, but I do have some later on directions in the pattern uh, that tell me, well, they sort of guide me on how big to make the neckline, but not really. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the right side and I'm gonna repeat my process of pulling the pleating threads out using the dull side of my seam ripper. Just following the little pleat valley as you go down. Okay, I'm going to kind of estimate the width of a little neck hole and I'm going to I'm going to tie my threads off about two and a half inches from each other. That way when I smock, the pleats are close enough together, but they're not too close to be too tight to smock. Tie a simple knot, just grab two threads and tie a simple knot. I'm clipping the excess thread off. Okay, so I've got my back piece ready to smock. I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, now on the front pieces, I have to create mirror images. So I need to um, have a right front facing and a left front facing. So this will take me a couple of minutes to pull my pleating threads out and tie knots. Okay, so I have pleated and pulled the pleating threads out to just on the right and left side of each of the smocking boxes on the back and on the left and right front, okay? Um, now this particular pattern actually has a smocking pattern for the front and for the back. For the front, it tells me to start the pattern, start the pattern at the inside, away from the armhole, and work my way towards the armhole on both sides. On the back, it tells me to start in the center and work my way towards the sleeves. Now, you can count these pleats on the back if you want, but since we marked it with a marking pen in the center, you can probably get away without counting. Okay, so in the next, for the next day or so, I, or for the next day, because it's not that much smocking, I will be smocking and I'll be using number 818 DMC floss. Let me show you. Number 818 DMC floss and a number five embroidery needle. Um, you know, needles are all over the place with sizes, but I like a number five embroidery needle because it has an eye large enough to accommodate the three strands that I smock with, and the needle is sharp enough that it goes through the fabric easily because uh, some needles are kind of, they got kind of a bull nose and they don't pierce the fabric real quickly. Okay, so in the next step, you know, we will be finished smocking. And like I said, I am going to use the smocking design that came in the pattern. Okay, so that's what I'm doing today. Thank you.